Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to God gracious praise. Say how awesome are your deeds. A very warm welcome to you today on this, the day of Pentecost. And wherever you are watching this, I hope that you are wearing something red, even if it's simply red pyjamas. Today, Susan Hammond is our guest preacher, and I look forward to hearing what she has to say about the giving of the Holy Spirit. Our service begins on page 35 of A Prayer Book for Australia, and I invite you to have that with you and also the pew sheet as we continue through the service. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, says the Lord, and let the one who believes in me drink, for out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water. And a thanksgiving prayer. Gracious God, we humbly thank you for life and health and safety, for freedom to work, leisure to rest, and for all that is beautiful in creation and human life. But above all, we praise you for our Saviour Jesus Christ, for his death and resurrection, for the gift of your spirit, and for the hope of sharing in your glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our collect for the day. Almighty God, at the Feast of Pentecost, you sent your Holy Spirit to the disciples, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel. Empower us with that same spirit to witness to your redeeming love and draw all people to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
The first reading is a reading from Acts 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabs. In our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 104, beginning at verse 26. Lord, how various are your works! In wisdom you have made them all, and the earth is full of your creatures. There is the wide, immeasurable sea. There are moving things without number, great and small. There go the ships to and fro, and there is the Leviathan whom you form to sport in the deep. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it, and when you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are troubled. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. If he look upon the earth, it shall tremble, but if he touch the mountains, they shall smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. 
I will praise my God while I have any being. May the meditations be pleasing to him, for my joy shall be in the Lord. The second reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 13. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Lord Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there, were, there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to the another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized in one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. This is the word of the Lord. We now turn to the affirmation of faith to be found on page 37. We believe in one God who made and loves all that is. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born, lived, died and rose again, and is coming to call all to account. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who calls, equips and sends out God's people and brings all things to their true end. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia. He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. 
Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are, you, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditations of my heart always be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. My Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. We all know about waiting. Many of us know what it is to be alone. To not be allowed to do the things we like to do. To not be able to go to work. Not go to the theatre. Sing in a choir. Go out for a meal. Hug a grandchild. Worship in community. COVID-19 has taught us to wait to be careful, to think of others, not just ourselves, to receive a virtual hug, sing in an online choir, meet via Zoom, eat a meal together online, read a story to our grandchildren online, be an online parish community, and yes, to be patient. The internet has opened up many wonderful new horizons, ways of being church, ways of being community, ways of being family. But this has also excluded many who do not have access to the internet. If you are watching or listening to this, thank you. COVID-19 has given us an opportunity to quieten within, to make big changes quickly, although some may not see this as opportunity, to embrace change, to listen to the Holy Spirit, pray for the common good and to put this love into action. We are weary. We are scared. We are excited by new possibilities. We wait for further lifting of COVID-19 restrictions. And we look forward to all being able to worship together at St Stephen's. To find new, exciting and additional ways to worship together as community. We have been challenged. We have seen the working of the Holy Spirit in Bayswater. The building may be closed, but our parish is not closed. Through prayer, the Holy Spirit has strengthened, given comfort and encouraged us to go out of our comfort zones. The Holy Spirit has truly been our helper and our advocate with online services, preachers, intercessors and readers, our IT expert, 
as well as the parish pantry and telephone ministry, parish council and wardens meetings online. Our outreach has been extended through Facebook and YouTube. This has been very different, but we have felt the Holy Ruach, the breath of God. Like the disciples, we understand the weeks of waiting, praying and trusting. The disciples are gathered together. They too have been waiting. Their world has been turned upside down. They had entered Jerusalem with Jesus to a welcome of Hosanna, turning the tables over in the temple, breaking bread with Jesus, seeing and being with Jesus as he was arrested and falsely tried, where those who had called out Hosanna now turned against him. They stood and watched Jesus tortured and crucified. They hear about the resurrection from the women, to believing and seeing the risen Lord and spending time with Jesus, learning about the kingdom and the promise of the Holy Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth before his ascension into heaven. These disciples must have been emotionally exhausted as they waited. As they gathered together, suddenly from heaven came a sound like a rush of violent wind and tongues of fire descending upon the heads of the disciples as they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. This was the Holy Spirit Jesus had spoken to his disciples about. This was his gift to the early church and to us today. This sounds like a very strange situation. No wonder people thought they were drunk. People addressed the crowd knowing that the devout Jews would recognise the passage from Joel. Peter is stepping up into leadership. No longer does he deny Christ. He proclaims Christ. The rest of Acts chapter 2 goes on to tell how the believers grew from 120 to 3,000. Community developed. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayers. They lived as community. They had all things in common, selling their possessions and goods and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having goodwill of all the people. The Holy Spirit was in a new way forming godly community. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. What can we learn from this today as we move forward in godly community at St Stephen's? How can we develop? How can we grow as a community? Develop communal ideas worship and pray together. Paul speaks to the Church of God that is in Corinth, but he also speaks to us today. He speaks to us of community unified by the Holy Spirit, community that reflects the fullness of the Holy Spirit in worship and ministry. The diverse gifts of the Holy Spirit that proclaim Jesus as Lord are valued as many parts of the one body. For we are all one body in Jesus Christ. 
The Holy Spirit gives us all gifts that equip us for various unifying and complementary ministries. The Holy Spirit energises us and empowers us to be mission focused in our ministry and outreach. We are all given the gift of the Holy Spirit for common good. Some are given the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, the gift of faith, the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, the gift of prophecy, the gift of discernment of spirits, the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues. Jesus brings us peace and comfort with his gift of the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, as we go out into the world. He brings power to enable us to go out into the world to proclaim, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Empower us, enable us, excite us, challenge us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Sustainer, counsellor, comforter, advocate. Come, Holy Spirit, Come, fill our hearts and lives. I invite you to join with me in the grace. Those who join in services and meetings on Zoom will understand when I ask you to hold up your hands. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen.
Now we come to the confession of faith. Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let us now confess our sins to Almighty God. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have broken your holy laws and have left undone what we ought to have done. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God desires that none should perish, but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Now let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Just before I send you out, please ensure that you read the notices that are in the pew sheet. As you will have read in the pew sheet, Parish Council met the other week and we have decided not to reopen the church just yet. But the COVID-19 officers, of which I am one of them, we are implementing the rules and regulations set out by the government and the diocese for the reopening of church, which includes marking off certain pews, um, marking um, spaces of physical distance, and also implementing the cleaning regulations. Please also pray for Messy Church that we will be having on, in a very different format for June, which will be online. So please look out for that. And also, if you have any uh, children in your life, any grandchildren or children, I invite you to um, show that to them. In the power of the Holy Spirit that we received by grace, let us pray. Almighty God, have mercy on a world where there is often speech without communication, relationships without love, and where people are separated by barriers of race, nationality and politics. Send your Holy Spirit to show women and men their true needs and teach them to live together without fear and animosity. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Heavenly Father, grant to the Church strength, wisdom and compassion through your Holy Spirit. Release in your people the power of living witness to your broken world, fulfilling your commandment to love. We pray for all our parish prayer cycle. Lavinia de Kock, Nee Goliath, Julie Edwards, Ainsley and Peter Ellis, the Ensel family, Dorothy, Greg, Michael and Claire. All who look to St. Stephen's as their home parish and Christians who are struggling, isolated and persecuted. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Light of the world, break through the darkness of unhappy lives with the light of your healing and guidance. Have mercy on those who have never known you, those struggling with physical and mental health issues, those recovering from surgery and all dealing with the ferocity of the COVID-19 pandemic. We also bring before you those who have been on our hearts and minds this week. The Lord is here. 
His Spirit is with us. We pray for those who now rejoice in the perfect knowledge and unclouded vision of your nearer presence, remembering those in our year's mind. Ruby Grace Rice, 1980. Nikola Milinkovic, 1992. And those who we remember with love, may we who know and worship you perfectly here come at last into that same eternal light. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers, feeding us with your word, and encouraging us in our meeting together. Take us and use us to love and serve you and all people in the power of your spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, may the God of peace equip you with everything good for doing his will, working in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. I thank you very much for joining me for today's service. Whatever the rest of the day holds for you, go well in God's blessing. Amen.